In Richmond, one of Scott's long-term patients is enjoying a few quiet cuddles with devoted owner Sarah. Badger is our 12 and a half year old Irish Wheaton Terrier that we've had since he was about six months old and he's been the best dog we could have ever wished for. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't find him dressed as a witch or a fairy or a, you know, he's just been an amazing part of the family. But Badger's been battling a massive low-level malignant tumour. Sore, isn't it? And despite two major surgeries, it keeps growing back. So we're sort of worried that if it isn't addressed, it's going to split the skin because it really is stretched. And it's like, sort of, it goes all the way underneath, sort of almost like a sort of tennis ball size and then this bit at the underneath. So it's, it's pretty grotesque. We sort of promised ourselves that we wouldn't operate again. Scott's done both operations previously and um, we kind of drew a line under it and went, right, that's, we're done. We're not going to do that again but it's sort of got bigger and bigger and, you know, he's relatively happy in every other way and we're now kind of like back in the situation of, what do we do? Badge, do you want to go for a walk, Keith? Yeah. Oh, come on, Bella. Oh. Come on, please. And let's go. Good boy. We've got to go and see Scotty, OK? Come on. Good boy. Got to get you up the hill. Okay. As Sarah heads in to see Scott, she's bracing herself Boy, for the possibility on. that Badger will need a third surgery. Come on, then. Let's do it. That's a good boy. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, Sarah. How are you? All right, here we are again. Oh, hello, Badger. How's he doing? All right. Yeah, he's doing OK, but, you know, the lump's... Really big now, so you I think... See, um, can't you? Yeah, I think it's okay. kind of decision time, so... Another chat with Scott. Oh, oh do you want to take a seat? Yes. He'll be right with you. Just let me know you're here. Thanks, love. All right. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Scott. Hello, Hello Badge. You? How are you, mate? You are right? You're a very happy boy today. Goodness me. I can see why you've come in. Yep. It's, it's not slowing down. It is not. It's quite monstrous at the moment, isn't it, mate? All right, all right, yes. all right. Yes. Oh, right, is that right. a bit tender? Come oh, here. Bless you. Come on. Let's keep this. Let's keep the happy, happy boy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the waggy tail is what we want. Come on, then, Badge. You're going to come this way. Come to the consult room. On. Come Good on. Boy. Good boy. Well done. Good lad. Didn't you come? There we go. Well done. So it's been a few weeks since we've seen each other, and unfortunately, that has grown. Hasn't it? Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's not slowing down. No. And how's he being affected by it, do you think? Well, I think slowing down. <laughs> he's, um, you know, he's not as inclined to sort of go for a walk as much as he was. You can tell it's just really cumbersome and it's awkward. He's finding it hard to find a comfortable spot to sit down. This is a massive tumour that's really pulling his weight off to one side, which will be affecting his balance, will be causing an increase in arthritic development in the back legs. There's a lot of negatives to this thing, besides the fact that it's stretching the muscles that it surrounds and causing him discomfort. He still wags his tail whenever anyone goes near him. He still wants to go for a walk, albeit a short one. So I feel like we're doing him an injustice if we just leave it. OK, well, but let's... It's, oh, it's a very hard decision, really. It is, it is, and we flip-flop about it constantly whenever we see each other, don't we? This is not the first time that we've considered removing Badger's tumour. It's a slow-growing sarcoma, which is a malignant type of tumour, but it's one that doesn't tend to spread. It just continues to regrow in the same site. Now, unfortunately, the size of this tumour and where it is means that we can't ever remove it completely, so unfortunately, it keeps growing back, and this is now the third time that's happened. So I think what we might have to do is just pop a muzzle on him. All right, champ, it's Hannibal Lecter time. Yeah, come here, bud. Come on. So he's a gentleman until he's challenged, and then yeah. he turns into a bit of a, a bit of a beast. Yes. <laughs> don't you, mate? Hey, no, you just know your own mind, don't you? Yes. Okay, you ready, Sarah? I'm gonna pop him up. Do you want me to lift, or you? No, we'll go. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Wow. This tumour is absolutely huge. Sort of see it coming out from his chest. It's almost like he's got an udder, isn't it? Like, it's just... It's like a, a cricket ball, isn't yeah. it? And, and it's sort of that hard as well. Yeah, it's huge. There's positives and negatives. Yeah. But I think the thing is, is that he is a lovely, otherwise healthy family dog. Yeah. Except for this. So if I can rid him of this one last time 
and give him the, you know, old age, genteel life in Richmond that he deserves, well, I think he deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. The worst thing would be for him to not come through surgery. I think, I, you know, we haven't got a choice now. He's just, you know, he's in too much discomfort. I think we've got to do it. So, um, yeah, I am worried. Cheerio, Boise. Be good. Come through it. OK. All right. All right thank okay, you. OK, love to you and the family. See you later. All right, bye. See ya. Bye. Okay. Say bye, Mummy. Say bye. Oh, I know. You've got to be such a brave boy. Yes, you do. Kanye. In Isleworth, John is arriving at the clinic with a lost kitten. Hi, uh, I've just found this kitten in a bush. In a bush? <laughs> yes. Nurse Lily is on reception. Basically, I dropped the kids off at school, and as I was going back to get in the car, I could hear this meowing in the bush. I had a little rummage around and eventually found her sort of three quarters of the way up this bush. Just a little ball of fluff, just crying away and a bit dishevelled. As you can imagine, she looked like she'd been stuck there a little while. So just in a bush on this road? Yeah, literally just 200 yards down the road there. What we can do is check her for a microchip and just see whether she's got an owner out there who's missing her. OK. <laughs> if you just hold her for a second. Yeah, no problem. The little stray that John has brought in is adorably cute. I think she probably does have an owner out there somewhere because she's in quite good shape and she's very friendly with people and a lot of strays generally aren't. But if we don't have a microchip, it's going to be really difficult for us to find that owner. But we'll give it our best shot. All right, here we go. So we make sure we check all over because they can move. OK. Hmm. Hey, missus. Doesn't look like she's got one, unfortunately. OK. Um, what we'll do is we'll keep her downstairs and then um, we'll get our vet Phoebe to check her over and make sure she's all OK. As a stray, what we have to do now is keep her for seven days and then we put a poster in our window and we'll pop her on our Facebook group as well. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And hopefully her owner will come forward in that time. If not, we'll start looking for a new home for her. OK, lovely. Thank you very much. No worries. Bye-bye. Bye. Any strays that turn up at the clinic are given a full health check. Hi, Phoebe. Hi. Hello. Oh, who's this? This is a little kitten who was found in a bush up the road. Oh, it was a stray? Yeah, a member of the public just brought it in. Oh, my God, it's purring. I know. I think it's a girl, but I'm not sure. Oh, well, let's have a look then, shall we? Yes, it's a girl. <laughs> She's young, though. She must only be about three or four months. Mm. Lily brings down the cutest little kitten downstairs. I can't believe that it's a stray. Phoebe is now going to look for clues about the little kitten's age or history. Mm, little baby tea. Definitely young, then. Definitely young. She also wants to make sure it has no underlying health issues. Considering that she's literally been fished out of the bush, we'll just give her the full health check over. The eyes, the ears, the nose, the check in the heart and chest. What's that? That all sounds fine. Did you hear anything under all that purr? <laughs> just about. <laughs> Overall, she's in really, really good health. She's a bit hungry, as you'd probably expect, but that's something we can easily fix. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's already chewing on my fingers. <laughs> Let's get you something to eat, Poppet. <laughs> Come on, then. Phoebe's had a good check over of her, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with her. You're very hungry, aren't you? The little kitten will stay at the practice, and hopefully her owner will be found soon. What do we think of this? You think that will find your owner? Hi, team. Hey, hey, you're right. Hey, yes, so, Badger's back, Nath. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he says with a worried look in his eye. <laughs> He's a really sweet dog, but just not the best patient. Agreed, hence the muscle. At Scott's Richmond Clinic, Badger is about to undergo major surgery to remove the massive tumour growing on his chest. 
Reagan, I don't know if you've met Badger. No, I have not. That is crazy. Yeah, it's not his most attractive feature. He's a champ. No. Unfortunately, I'd love to say that this is the first time we've removed it, but it's actually our third. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, a slow-growing sarcoma. It doesn't actually spread anywhere else in his body, but just continues to want to live on this side of his chest. And you can just think how taut. It's so tight, you can feel it. Yeah. So it's stretching all those muscles, and that's what's so uncomfortable. That's why you're panting all the time, aren't you, mate? Because you're just a little bit low-level uncomfortable all the time. Oh. So this time, third time lucky. Look how vascular it is as well. With Badge's fur shaved off, the huge scar from his two previous surgeries is clearly visible. Right, here we go. Can you feel anything? I can't hear anything. You want to run in now? Yeah. Anything? Badger has now been unresponsive for over six minutes. And Scott is forced to make an agonizing decision. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna call it, guys. I think the looks on everyone's faces, I think, says it all. Everyone's completely gutted, and especially Scott. Okay. <laughs> Scott now has to make a heartbreaking phone call. Hello. Oh, hi, Sarah. Hi, um, Scott here. Hi, Scott. Hiya. Um, yeah, I haven't got good news for you, I'm afraid, Sarah. Yeah, he's, he passed away on the table, I'm afraid. Oh, my God. Oh, what happened? Tell me. I got probably two-thirds of the tumour out um, and uh, was just sort of cleaning up the edges before closing. He stopped breathing and this time I couldn't get him back. Oh, Lord. I just was so sure he was going to come through the surgery. So, so, did, so did I. That's why I just, I'm like, I'm so sorry, Sarah. Yeah, she's, uh, <laughs> she's devastated, as you would imagine. Um, straight away as a parent, she's thinking about the kids and thinking about the fact that she decided not to tell them before the surgery, thinking that they would worry. And so now, obviously, they're going to be so heartbroken that they didn't get a chance to say goodbye, <laughs> which is just, you know, thinking about my kids and thinking about that happening to my dog, it would be very hard. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad, bad day. Yeah. Sorry, mate. At the Isleworth Clinic, the lost kitten is making herself at home with Nurse Alicia. It's been three days since the little stray was brought into the clinic, and so far no owners have come forward to claim her. But she does have some unexpected visitors. Hello. I uh, brought my wife in to see the kitten. Oh, yes, I remember. You found her in a bush earlier, didn't yes. you? Yes. OK, perfect. What I'll do is I'll just go grab her for you and you can say hello. Thank you. <laughs> You look like you're having fun. We are. I've got the gentleman who found her upstairs. He's oh, really? brought his wife in to say hello. Oh, fabulous. Come this way. Come on, you've got visitors. <laughs> 
John found the little stray and hasn't been able to forget her. Here she is. And he's hoping his wife, Katie, will be equally smitten. Can you have a cuddle? She's adorable. So if nobody comes for her and you want her, we can take her out. We want you. I think we do. But by law, the practice has to wait seven days to see if an owner comes forward before they can rehome the kitten. So John and Katie have another four days to wait. She is adorable. She is absolutely beautiful. What we call her. Dunno. What about Smudge? You have Smudge? I think she agrees. I think she might. So it looks like a little smudge, as she's now called, has landed on her feet with those two. And hopefully they'll be able to take her home if the original owner doesn't come forward. Let me get the coupon. In Epsom, Surrey, Scott's patient Cookie and her owner Millie are doing what they love most. She means everything to me, really, because I've had her since she was eight weeks old, and I've just been with her for like 24 7. She's always with me, she's always making me smile when I'm not down. She's just always there for me, and she's always happy. I love her very much. What's this? <laughs> I've never known a bond like Millie's and Cookie's. Um, they just, they're just together all the time. They're just peas in a pod, perfect together. <laughs> but the little Shih Tzu cross has recently developed a worrying problem. Cookie's breathing's very noisy. When she exerts herself or she gets nervous or worried, she gets, you know, her breathing's laboured. It's like someone just pressing down on your chest all the time or something just being in your throat and like stopping you from breathing. And I feel quite sorry for her because like, she can't really run around the park as much as she'd want to because she gets out of breath quite easily. Diane and Millie suspect there is an issue with Cookie's soft palate, but they won't know for sure till they see Scott tomorrow. Hopefully something can be done about it to ease her breathing, especially as she gets older. At the end of a tough day, Scott's at home in Surrey working on a special project, a chicken coop. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to having chickens in my house. It's not something that the average Londoner can do, but now we've moved out a little bit further, I've got the space, the kids are gonna love it, and these chickens just desperately need a new start in life. Scott's getting some rescue chickens, but first he needs to finish the hen house. Try and get your way through that, Mr. Fox. Last year, Scott met a team of volunteers who rehome chickens. Hello, girls. When the birds are no longer producing enough eggs, some of the luckier ones are given away by commercial farms and are then known as rescue hens. After careful health checks, they're then available to be rehomed. When you think that these poor birds live their whole life in a tiny cage with wire at the bottom, they don't have natural light, it's just an awful existence for them. So I'm happy to get dirty, get stuck in, build them the coop of their dreams. Whoop, whoop. Hey, no. This really is no one-person job. There's a nurse when you need them. Mate, you got some screws? Oh, good boy. Good helping. That's it. Do you want to help Daddy put one in? Yeah. Oh, that's looking pretty good. JJ, what do you think? Hi, Scott. Hi, Jackson. Hey, Ali, how are you? I'm all right. How are you doing? Looking yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Scott's been also been, been, been spurred on by his yeah, long-time friend and so neighbour, Ali. What do you think, Jackson? It's looking good. Yes. I've known I wanted to get chickens for a long time. I mentioned that to Scott, and he said, oh, you're getting chickens, I want to get chickens too. So we've decided to go and get chickens together. <laughs> Ali <laughs> has already go. set up yeah. her chicken coop <laughs> and has come over to give the Miller boys a helping hand. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think an extra pair of hands is always useful, but a three-year-old with a power tool is not always that helpful. You know, as much <laughs> fun as it is building with a toddler, yeah, um, yeah, I, can imagine. I could do with some adult supervision. <laughs> I don't like blowing my own trumpet, but yes, I've built enough flat pack in my time to know that I can follow those instructions, unlike Scott. <laughs> I'm a bloke, I don't need instructions. Ali and I are good mates and we forged our relationship over a long time. It's so much easier doing it with another adult. But she's also a strong-willed lady who knows her own mind. <laughs> OK. So that has to do that. OK. Good. Good. Solid. Happy? Feels pretty solid, yeah. It's, yeah. The proof is in the roof, I guess. I think our little girls are going to be all snuggled up in there. What are you doing? Hi, baby. Yeah. This is our new chicken coop. Yeah. With the chicken here, coop nearing What's completion, uh, all that's whoa. needed are the new residents. Why? We're getting quite exciting. It's only a few days away, so yeah, the girls are coming. Yeah. Can you live with that? <laughs> Done. Cool. All right. Yes. Girls, high five. Oh wow, <laughs> it's so nice, isn't it? Diane and her daughter Millie have arrived at Scott's Richmond practice with their noisy companion, Cookie. Hi there. Hi. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good. This, this is, is Cookie. Cookie. Yes. Oh, hello. 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 Hello, guys. How are you? Hi, Hi I'm Scott. How Hi, are you? Diane. Hi, Hi Diane. Diane. Hello, Millie. Hello, Millie. Well, who's this? Cookie. Hello, Cookie. You're looking very comfortable in there. <laughs> that's a very funny noise. Let's hope that's just you snoring. Is it? <laughs> All right. Do you want to come in the consult yeah. room? Come on. She means the world to me, so I'm a bit nervous. So why is she here today? You can hear she has trouble uh, breathing. She's got this noise at the back of her throat, which we think is a soft palate. That is an incredible noise. So the first thing I can see is she has virtually no nostrils, very tightly positioned nostrils like that. So that's why she probably has to open her mouth to breathe. Just have a little listen to your lungs. Well, I can still hear the noise but it sounds far away, which means that the problem isn't emanating from the chest. It's further up, as you guessed. Yeah, yeah. So, I think that um, you are bang on in your diagnosis. I do think it's almost certain to be a soft palate issue. So basically, that's the structure that separates your nasal passages from your oral cavity in your mouth. And it's like a big, thick tongue that sort of flaps in the back. And in some dogs that have shorter noses, like little Cookie here, it's all shunted into the back. And then that flaps over her larynx and then every single breath she takes in, comes in and it goes like that over the larynx and it's sort of flapping like a curtain in an open window. And that's the noise that we can hear. Dogs with this particular syndrome, which is called BOAS, which is brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, can be under real duress when it comes to exercise or when it's hot and they're running out and about say, in the park and they can literally suffocate. So what we need to do is to perform surgery ASAP. Cookie could really be in a lot of danger, so we do need to address this problem now. Your little princess is gonna need two little bits of surgery today, all right? Um, first off, we need to make her nostrils bigger and then we need to shorten that curtain, all right? It's flapping over her, her airways, all right? It's really scary because she hasn't really been under anaesthetic that much and you don't really know. You okay? You're a bit worried, aren't you? Yeah. Oh. All the animals that come into the practice are loved, but you can really tell there's a very close bond between Cookie and Millie, so I'm definitely not going to let it down today. Thank you. All right. Say goodbye. We'll see you later. Say bye. See you later. And hopefully, when you see her again, she'll be making less noise. Say bye. Say bye. She's very special. It's sort of um, unimaginable, isn't it, to, to be without her? So, yeah, it is, it is worrying. Hey? 
You sound like me when I'm asleep. Hmm? In Isleworth, it's now been seven days since John found the lost kitten. Go on then, in you go. And he's back today with wife Katie and daughter Parker. Hello. Hi. Hiya. I do believe she's yours. Finally. Do you want me to go get her for you? Yes, please. Are you excited? Very. Yes. Go get her. I'm very, 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 very excited. <laughs> How are you? It's been seven days and no one's come forward to claim her, so it looks like Smudge is definitely Katie and John's. They look so excited. Here she is. Hi, Hi now. And I think little Parker could hardly contain herself. <laughs> Look, it's your new kitty. Finally. Finally we get to take her home. Been worried all week that someone was going to come in and ring and say that she wasn't ours, but now she is. Very exciting. She's so cute. I'm going to kiss her. Kiss her nose? Yeah. I think Parker and Smudge are going to get on very well. I think we're going to have friends for life. She's very, very excited to get this cat home and give it lots of cuddles and play with it and introduce it to the dog and the cat. Mm. Are you happy now? Yeah. It's great to know she's going to a loving home. She'll be a welcome addition. Bless her. Wow. It's going to be a shame for us not having Smudge here. She's kind of settled in brilliantly over the last seven days, and it's going to be odd coming to work and not seeing her. But having her in a family environment is what's best for her, and it just wouldn't be fair to keep her here just for us. Say bye to Lily. Bye. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Shall we take her home then? Come on, Em. Good girl. Okay, thumb more. So nearly done, sweetheart. Good girl. In Richmond, Scott is hoping surgery will help give Cookie a better quality of life. Nurse Nathan will be assisting. Hey. <laughs> yes. Cookie has small nostrils, as well as an elongated soft palate that is obstructing her airway and causing her constant snorting. Brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome is the problem, and the solution is not only increasing the size of her nostrils, but also reducing the size of her soft palate, which will reduce the noise and hopefully make Cookie breathe easier. Yep. Yeah. OK. Oh, that's so much better. All right, let's wake her up and see if she uh, has stopped making that awful noise. Hey, let's say it's the, that's the moment of truth. All right, sweetheart, good girl. There we go. There we go. Oh, hello. Listen to that. Mm. Happy with that. Eh? Yeah. Looks good, sounds good. Yeah. The proof really will be in the pudding when it comes to Cookie recovering from her anaesthetic because the tube's been down her throat. So you know there's a bit of throat clearing, there's maybe a little bit of fluid in her nose as well, and a bit of irritation to her windpipe because of the tube. All of that adds up to being far less than the noise she made before we started. So it's a great result. Once Cookie fully recovers from the anaesthetic, Diane and Millie will be back to collect her later this afternoon. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Listen to you, hey? Oh, what a lovely, quiet girl you are. In Richmond, little Cookie has recovered from her soft palate surgery. Come on, then. Oh. And has been given the all clear to go home. That's it. Oh, here's your bag. In you go. Good girl. That means home, doesn't it? Good girl. Scott used a special new cutting tool for Cookie's surgery and vet Phoebe has wasted no time getting in some practice. Hello. What are you up to? <laughs> Just practising. Wow, what's your patient's name? Porky. Porky. <laughs> wow, you're doing a very nice job on Porky. Well, you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? You do. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> Too pleased to see you. Thank I you. can't wait. I know. 
Are you worried today? Yeah. And so was I. The day went by so slow. I know. Upstairs, Cookie's owners Diane and Millie are eager to collect their little girl. It was a pretty horrid day. I had to sort of, um, you know, keep myself occupied and, uh, yeah, try not to worry and be positive. And I'm a bit um, apprehensive to see her and find out how she's coped with it and, um, you know, just see how she looks and how she's acting. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Here she oh, is. Oh, hello, baby. Oh, look, you've got purple stitches. She's got a new looking nostrils. Are you all right? <laughs> Let's just have a listen. What do we hear? Silence. The sound of silence. <laughs> Massive difference, eh? So the first thing that we did is had a look in the back of her throat and just as I suspected, that curtain was right in front of the open window and just sort of being sucked back and that sort of vibration was making all that noise that we could hear. So that got trimmed. Mm. Then the second thing, as of course you can see, is she's got slightly different shaped nostrils now by just giving that increased aperture you can see that she is just making far less noise. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. You're happy to have her back? Yeah, we couldn't wait, could we? we? Couldn't wait to get her back. The recovery is incredible. You can't hear her heavy breathing anymore. She's come through OK. Yeah, she looks great. Just a bit of TLC now and she'll be fine. It's going to be really quiet. I went off to put headphones in to block out her snoring anymore. All right then. Mm. Oh, my beautiful. What a sweetheart you are. Back to mummy. Here you go. Thank you. You're very welcome. Handing Cookie back to Millie was a wonderful moment because you could really see that she was just so happy to have her little companion back. And for me as a vet, it's really rewarding because I know I've done my job to ensure that Cookie is going to breathe beautifully and healthily a long way into the future. Bye. Bye. Go get the girls. It's the weekend, and Scott and his neighbour Ali are picking up their rescue heads. Hi there, you must be Fran. Hi, How I'm you Fran. Doing? Nice to meet you, I'm Scott. Scott. Yeah, and this is Ali. Hi, Fran. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. How are you doing? We are. Girls? We're, we're pretty, pretty excited. excited. We are. <laughs> we're not. We're excited. Do you want to follow me? I'll lead you the way. Excellent. This is one of the collection points for the British Hen Welfare Trust where the public can come to get hens for rehoming after the birds are no longer productive enough at commercial farms. Oh, bless you. Hello. Hello. OK, should we start grabbing them out? Yeah. But first, all the birds have to have health checks. There will be 150 chickens here, sort of all needing to have a once over, have their claws clipped, etc. So it'll be great that Scott and Ali can, can help us do that. Come on, sweetheart. Good girl. Go that way. There we go. Good girls. Are you all right? Yes. Yeah. Off you go, girls. Come here, sweetie. There we go. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, baby. Birds that have been in a caged hen environment have feather loss. They've also got very floppy combs. And some of them are quite lean, which maybe means that they were just a little bit more picked on than some of the others, so they were at the end of the food queue. Right, let's have a little look at you. So, first thing I notice there, she's got this very pale comb, flopping down like that. That's really common, yeah, but that will shrink and it will go bright red once she's sort of cooled down a bit. Yeah. Just because it's so hot in the cages. Bit of sunlight. Exactly, good yeah. Good diet. will do her good, yeah, yeah, definitely. She'll be right as rain. OK, let's have a little look at this girl here. Whoa, OK, OK. Let's have a look at your nails. So, yeah, they're quite long, Very aren't they? Very pale legs. These birds shoved into spaces that are too small with no natural light. There you go, sweetheart. <laughs> their feet are on wire their entire lives. They're dumped at 72 weeks because they're not laying as much as they need to lay. You know, they're just effectively a living machine. That doesn't sit comfortably with me. Hey. Ellie, do you love this one? I think this one's your first chicken. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> hey. Ali's definitely got her eye on this one. It's because uh, Ali's had her first chicken cuddle and she's smitten. Hello, sweetheart. I just want to give him a good home, really. OK, so she can go down. Once we've examined all the birds and they all seem to be in pretty good nick, Ali and I get to choose chickens, which is very exciting indeed. <laughs> 
Incredibly. Who has it's like my Rocky moment. I've got you, I've got you. You're so definitely going well home with done. me after that. <laughs> this one's very talkative. I think she'll suit my household very well. Oh, it's three. Three more. So these girls don't really know how lucky they are. As soon as they get home, they'll be sunbathing for the first time, standing on grass for the first time, laying their first freedom egg, which is amazing. So they've got just a whole free range retirement ahead of them, and they're going to be really, really happy. Hello. You're home. Scott is dropping off Ali and her hens first. I'm hoping they'll settle in pretty quickly. Yeah. Say hi to mummy. Hello, me. I want them to have a very different life. I want them to have fresh air and sunlight and freedom and the best food you can give them. All the stuff they're going to love. Welcome to your new home. Some more females into the ranks of the Miller household. You come to welcome the girls. Come on then. And now, Scott can introduce his new arrivals to their brand new home. Come on. Okay. I'm really chuffed at the whole process actually and to finally have the girls here and to know that they're safe and happy and well it's it's such a wonderful feeling look sunshine and a tree i know those fairy things down there are dogs and you're going to meet a few more people soon hey come on then in you go you guys have a nice little rest a few more important people for you to meet yeah look who do you think's going to be in here jj Look. Yes. Do you want to meet them? Look. The new arrivals Look. are settling in well, and Scott That's is excited it. to introduce them to the family. Cute. They are very cute, aren't they, mate? Very cute. I've already called that one. That one's Eggy, that one there. Eggy. That's Eggy there. Okay. okay. Yep. Did and you then see the dark one there. Is. That's Chuck Norris there. Chucky, can you look? Oh, Did wow, you... one's gone oh. out. Yay, that's Hey Hey. It's always special to rescue animals, but to know that they wouldn't have been alive if it wasn't for us taking them to our new homes is just such a wonderful feeling. Hi, Pass. That's Pass. Hi, Pass. The boy. The girl. Oh, hi, Pass. The girl. Yeah. <laughs> they need to be girls to lay eggs. If they were boys, they'd wake you up at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's true. <laughs> like you <That's> do. <laughs> <laughs> Just introduced the chickens to the kids and they think they're wonderful and they're so excited for them to be here. It's just such a lovely additive to the family and also the end of the journey to have the girls here and to have them comfortable and happy and they're already eating and pecking around. It's a really good result, so I'm ecstatic. <laughs> and three weeks later, Scott is checking up on Little Cookie. Hello. Hello! How's it going? Fine, how are you? Good. Hello, beautiful. I've been looking forward to seeing you. Come on in. Thank you very much. The Shih Tzu Cross had nose and soft palate surgery to fix her constant snoring and breathing difficulties. Well, first things first, let me see this beautiful face. And she has nostrils. Look at those. Big difference, yes, eh? Yes, huge difference. I'd say she's about 80 or 90 percent quieter. Wow. Straight away, you can hear that she sounds better, she's far quieter, which means that Millie gets a good night's sleep. Less noise, more energy, huge yeah. difference, yeah. Gosh, that is incredible, isn't it? She's a different dog. She just enjoys her walk so much more, and she sniffs, she stops and sniffs, which she never did before, really. Really? Yeah. She's I found mean, a sense of smell. Yeah, it's really different. Which is just awesome. It's yeah. the icing on the cake, isn't it? Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.